Hello and welcome everyone to Science Era. In today's video, we are going to look at basic psychology emotions from a student's A to Z of psychology by David Deventer. Every day of our lives, we experience a variety of emotion. Emotion are one type of feeling. Emotion are feelings that are clearly linked to the meaning of a particular situation. According to Kuhn, the word emotion means to move. For example, an emotion may move us to do something like fear may move us to run away from the danger. In explaining what takes place during the experience of an emotion, we need to understand how bodily arousal, behavior, cognition and expression are interrelated. The concept of emotion therefore can be defined as combination of physiological arousal combined with perceptual cognitive processes and observable behavioral expressions. Most important components of emotion include physiological arousal, cognitive processes and behavioral expressions. Physiological component Physiological arousal associated with emotions occur through the action of autonomic nervous system which regulates the activity of glands, smooth muscle and blood vessels. When an emotion is experienced, arousal increases and sympathetic system activates the body for emergency action. For example, for fighting to protect the person or fleeing from the danger. The arousal leads to powerful bodily changes that improves the chance of surviving in an emergency. After a period of intense emotion, activation of parasympathetic nervous system has the following effect. Heart rate slows, the pupil cells return to normal and blood pressure drops. In this way, the parasympathetic system restores the balance and helps build up and converse body energy. The connection between emotion and autonomic arousal provides the basis for the use of devices like a lie detector. Move accurately, more accurately called polygraph. A lie detector is a device that is usually used by the police to record physiological changes in the body, such as the change in heart rate, breathing rate and blood pressure. As they question a person, the lie detector does not in actual fact detect lies but rather measures emotional arousal by monitoring the heart rate, blood pressure, breathing rate and the amount of sweats on the hand while person responds to the question. The idea is that lying causes an increase in physiological arousal which is picked up by the lie detector and this can indicate whether the person responds to a question is a lie or not. Emotions are highly personal and related to subjective experience. In understanding emotion, we usually rely on individual or subjective verbal reports of what is people are experiencing. People's cognitive processes about events in their lives are therefore the key determinant of the emotions they experience. A specific event such as driving a car for example may be very pleasurable for some people but highly threatening and thus anxiety provoking for another. The emotion relating to driving depends on what a person thinks about driving. The context of driving past experiences regarding driving and present needs. For example, a young person who gets freedom and independence by driving is likely to see driving as an enjoyable experience, whereas a person who has re recently been in involved in a motor vehicle accident may view it as scary or unpleasant experience. Behavioral components. Although we can talk about our emotions, they are usually expressed in body language or non-verbal behavior. Body gestures and facial expression are used to show a variety of basic emotions. For example, imagine that you see a girl who has tears in her eyes with the corner of her mouth turned down and the perhaps trembling lips who says little and sits slumped over. On the basis of her facial expression and body language, it is likely that you will conclude that the girl is sad and despondent, even though you have not spoken to her. Basic facial expression like anger, fear, disgust, sadness and happiness appears to be fairly universal. This means that these facial expressions are interrupted in the same way by all cultures. However, the interpretation for many facial expressions can be shaped by learning. 
As a result, some facial expressions are found only in specific cultures. For example, among many African cultures, sticking out tongue is a gesture of disrespect or teasing. For a person from Chinese culture, sticking out tongue is a gesture of surprise. If a person comes from another culture, it is important to know the social context in which a facial expression developed in order to make sure that the expressed emotion is not misunderstood. Many researchers have tried to classify emotion experienced by humans. The following criteria will be used to identify and describe the various emotions, primary and secondary emotions. Some years ago, Robert Pulchik pro pro proposed that there are eight primary basic emotions, fear, surprise, sadness, disgust, anger, anticipation, joy, and acceptance. Combination of these primary emotions lead to generation of another emotion. For example, Combination of joy and acceptance may give rise to the emotion love. It is important to remember that there are enormous differences in the way that different cultures view and categorize emotion. Some do not have words for anxiety or depression or guilt. Some have words for encompassing love, sympathy, pity and liking, which are all distinct emotion in other cultures. Because of cultural differences in experience of emotions, the tendency now is to distinguish between primary and secondary emotions. Primary emotions are those emotions shared by people throughout the world. Regardless of the culture, most researchers use four criteria to identify primary emotions. They must be evident in all cultures. They must contribute to survival. They must be associated with a distinct facial expression and they must be evident in non-human species. For example, anger is expressed by revealing the teeth in human and animals such as dog or baboons. There is still no conclusive agreement on which emotion qualify as primary emotions. Secondary emotions are those that are found in some cultures but are not in all of them. Secondary emotions may be considered as various combination of primary emotions as influenced by cultural background. Positive and negative emotion. Emotion may be experienced as positive or negative. Positive emotions like joy, love, acceptance usually experience as pleasurable and rewarding. Positive emotion may create an urge to be creative, to explore, to seek new experience and to grow. In short, positive emotion encourage personal growth and social connection. A capacity for having pos positive emotion is a basic human strength and may lead to development of emotional intelligence. Negative emotions, on the other hand, are usually experienced as unpleasant, intense negative emotion involves arousal of sympathetic nervous system, which prepares the individual to either run away in fear or fight in anger. When physiological arousal is prolonged or unresolved, negative emotion may contribute to the development of physical illness, such as headaches, stomach ache, ulcers, and physiological problems such as depression or anxiety. Intensity of emotion varies on the continent ranging from extremely low to extremely high intensity. For example, if you are angry, you may feel annoyance or rage. Annoyance is less intense emotion while rage may be classified as a more intense one. The intensity of feeling interacts with level of your physiological arousal and quality of emotion you are experiencing. At the low level of physiological arousal, the emotion experience are at the low intensity. In this case, the quality of experience is neutral in the sense that it is ne neither clearly pleasant or clearly unpleasant. Emotions like acceptance, boredom and annoyance belong to this group. At a high level of psychophysiological arousal, emotion experienced are usually of high intensity and the quality of emotion can in most instances be clearly defined as the pleasant or unpleasant. These imply that there can be major differences in intensity of primary emotions like joy, anger or fear. Internally and externally expressed emotion. Emotions are expressed and recognized in different ways. For example, we can distinguish between internal and external expression of emotion. Physiological changes are internal expression of emotion. Research has shown that there are subtle but distinct physiological changes associated with specific emotions. Emotions can also be externally expressed through words. For example, anger or frustration can be verbally expressed by swearing or shouting at someone and through non-verbal communication such as facial expressions, gestures, and body movement or tone of voice. If these external expressions are viewed in relation to the context in which they are expressed, they are useful tool in identifying and recognizing the nature and intensity of expressed emotions.
The term motivation refers to an internal state that activates and gives direction to our thoughts, feelings, and action. Morris and Masito defines a motive define a motive as a specific need or desire that arouses the organism and directs its behavior towards a goal. All motives are triggered by some kind of stimulus. For example, a motive for a hunger can be triggered by bodily conditions such as low blood pressure, low sugar level, or cues in the environment such as advertisement on TV or juicy steak or a feeling of feelings such as boredom and loneliness. Emotion refers to the experience or feeling of such fears or joy or anger, etc. Like mo motives, emotion are also activates and affect behavior, but it is difficult to predict the kind of behavior that a particular emotion will prompt. Motivation and emotion are closely linked concept for three reasons. Both motives, mo uh, motives and arousal of emotion activate behaviors. For example, you may study hard because you are motivated by your friend or because you fear failure. Motives are often accompanied by emotions. For example, the motive to succeed or perform well in exam is often accompanied by feeling of anxiety. Emotions typically have emotion motivational properties of their own. For example, because you are in love, you are motivated to be with the one you love. According to sketches, emotion occurs when we apply a particular label to a general physical arousal. The experience of emotion therefore depends on two factors autonomic arousal and cognitive interpretation of that arousal. The following is an example of application of two-factor theory. The theory would predict that if you met a dog while walking in the bush, you would be aroused. If the dog seemed aggressive, you would interpret your arousal as fear. However, if the dog ref offered a paw to shake your hand, you would be happy, amazed or relieved. This example makes it clear that emotion is much more than just an agitated body. Scatcher believed that when we are aroused, we have a need to interpret our feelings. Therefore, the type of emotion we experience depends on our interpretation of arousal according to the contest. He concluded that the conscious experience of physiological arousal and the conscious experience of meaning of the Stimulus situation are equally important and integrated components of the emotions. Cognitive theory of emotion claims that component of physiological arousal and cognitive processes are not equally important in interpretation of emotions. It is suggested that the way we think about of a situation result in emotions. According to cognitive appraisal theory, the important requirement for interpretation of emotion is cognitive content of the stimulus situation. That is, the meaning attached to stimulus situation at that moment is more important than the physiological arousal. In other words, our interpretation of a situation or event is primary cause of emotion and can result in experiencing different emotions. According to cognitive appraisal theory, Using an example of dog again, the sequence of event in interpretation of emotion follows. You perceive the stimulus situation and categorize it according to the concept that you are familiar with. You see and know that it is a dog. Primary appraisal occurs on the basis of past experience or knowledge. You appraise or weigh up the situation as either threatening or non-threatening. In this case, your past knowledge of dog tell you that they are dangerous. The emotion is then differentiated. Depending on the nature of the primary appraisal, an appropriate emotion differentiate. This means that the type of emotion you experience depend on your interpretation of the situation. For example, if your appraisal leads to interpretation that situation is dangerous or threatening, you will experience fear. If you interpret that it is not threatening situation, you will not experience fear. Lastly, physiological arousal or body changes. Shaking knees accompanying or follow or follow the events, for example, body changes such as shaking knees or a loud heartbeat may increase your feeling of fear and encourage the desire or impulse to run away. This can be represented by the schematic representation. Stimulus led by primary appraisal arousal, then differentiation of emotion and then physiological changes.
Cognitive theory adds two further steps in differentiation of emotion. This involves secondary appraisal and copying strategies in re reaction to a situation. Secondary appraisal refers to the consideration of how to act and consequence of various course of action. The second option is reappraisal, which means reconsideration of situation, especially in light of new addition, additional information that was not available when emotion was initially experienced. By reappraising situation and considering different coping strategies, it may be possible to gain cognitive control over the quality and intensity of emotion that result from prime reappraisal. Many years ago, the philosopher Aristotle wrote that it is isn't easy for anyone to become angry, but that it is not easy to become angry at the right person in the right way at the right time for the right reason. Today, we call this ability to know and manage our own emotion, emotional intelligence. Emotional intelligence refers to combination of skills, including empathy, understanding what others are experiencing, self-control, self-awareness, sensitivity to the feelings of others, persistence, keeping on going, keeping on going even when the situation is difficult, and self-motivation doing things for yourself and not relying on other people or things to motivate you. Emotional intelligence provides the link between feelings, characters and moral values. Being emotionally intelligent means using and expressing our emotion wisely and appropriately. The psychologist and writer Daniel Goleman believes that people who do well in life tend to be emotionally intelligent. Good self-control, sensitivity to others, and appropriate expression of emotion help us have good relationship, be successful at work, and protect our health and well-being. Coleman suggests that deficiencies in emotional intelligence increase the risk for problems such as depression, aggression, and violence, anxiety, eating disorder, and drug abuse. He believes that the solution is to teach young people self-awareness, self-control, and empathy, and abilities to listening, resolving con conflicts, and cooperation. We cannot do without emotions, but we need to control and express them appropriately. Women have a reputation of being more emotional than men. In one study, when a men and women saw movies of people in distress, the men showed little emotion, but women expressed feeling of concern for those in distress. Certain emotional expressions are expected from women, whereas they are not expected from men. As a result, men learn to suppress their emotion expression for very young age. Emotions such as sympathy, sadness, and distress and expression of these emotions such as crying are often considered unmanly in many cultures. Boys are trained to suppress their, uh, uh, trained to suppress their emotion from very early age in public. This may explain why men are less likely than women to seek help in dealing with emotional issues. For many men, an inability to express feelings is a major barrier to having close, satisfying relationship with others. Men and women are also likely to react with a different emotion to the same situation. For example, a man may react to betrayal by feeling anger, whereas women may react by feeling sad, hurt, or disappointed. When men get angry, they generally turn their anger outward against other people or situation in which they find themselves and women generally turn their angers inward. These gender specific reactions are consistent with the fact that men are four times more likely than women to become violent in the face of life crisis. Men and women also differ in their ability to interpret non-verbal cues of emotion. Although many natural expressions associated with basic emotion appear to be similar in many cultures, culture influences the way people learn to control and modify these expressions. The principle called display rule refers to the culture-specific rule that governs how, when, and why expression of emotions are appropriate. These rules concern the circumstances under which it is culturally acceptable for people to show emotions. Display rule differs greatly from culture to culture and therefore non-verbal expression of emotion vary across cultures because of the culture-specific attitude and display rule. Knowledge of context in which an emotion is expressed is important in accurately understanding and interpreting the expressed emotion. People usually use facial expression, body language, tone of voice and language of interpret the nature and intensity of emotion. These cues, if used in isolation, may lead to incorrect, inadequate 
interpretation of somebody's emotion this brings us to the end of emotions if you understand this topic like my video don't forget to subscribe for more thank you